Amen. I love it. That's when it gets into our heart and our soul, isn't it? Revelation 1 and 19. Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are the things which shall be hereafter. The things which are are what? The church. All right. Flip with me to Revelation 3 and 10. I told you a few Sundays ago you'd see this verse again. Listen to what it says. Speaking to the church. Because I has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Revelation 4 and 1. You ought to mark this scripture in your Bible. You will read it repeatedly in these last days that we live. Revelation 4 and 1. After this, after what has he been talking about? The what? The church. After this, I looked and behold a door was open in heaven. The first verse which I hear, heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. I want to speak for just a moment if the Holy Ghost will... Bless and anoint and help me to this morning on the rapture of the church. Father, I thank you for your great love. I thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your grace. I thank you for the touch of your spirit that I feel in this house this morning. I know that your word will go forth, that it will accomplish, that it will bring to pass the things that you send it forth to do. I ask God that you touch each heart, each life. If there's any that does not have this blessed hope, has an anchor of their soul, both sure and steadfast, let them this day, Lord, reach out and receive you as their Lord and Savior, that this hope may dwell in them. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Rapture. Brother Doug, you can't show me the word rapture in the Bible. No, I can't. And you can't show me the word Bible inside of the Holy Word neither. It talks about the Word of God. It talks about the laws and the things of God, but not Bible. But I can show you a catching away. And we're going to look at that this morning. The rapture, the coming of the Lord. Now when we speak of the rapture, we're not talking about the second coming of the Lord. We're not talking about what the Old Testament prophets spoke so much about. This was the chief theme. If you look at the Old Testament time and time and time again, you would hear the prophets tell about the day of the Lord and the time that the Lord would come, that second coming. But His second coming we read about and we see it in Revelation 19 verses 11 through 21. You read about it in Matthew 24 and 25 when He will come to bring judgment Judgment on the earth and the saints of God will come with him. That is the second coming. But I'm talking about when Jesus Christ is going to break through the clouds of glory to receive his church. Oh, hallelujah. His blood-bought church, his glorious church unto himself that where he is there we may be also. St. John chapter 14 and verse 1. I might have to get a little undignified this morning. Revelation. I mean, St. John, chapter 14 and verse 1. You can quote these scriptures this morning. Let not your heart be troubled. St. John 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Is it works? Is it paying so much money or doing so many things? It is what? Believe. Oh, hallelujah. In my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Brother Doug, what is the purpose of this rapture that you speak about? It is so that he can bring the church to himself and we can be with him and live and reign. He said, and whether I go in verse 4, whether I go, you know, and the way, you know, I'm glad Thomas was standing by. A lot of people look down on Thomas, but I I ask questions. You're not going to learn anything unless you ask questions. And Thomas said, as he said unto him, a lot of people just want to stand around and act smart like they know. I've done it too and walk away and ask somebody, what was they talking about? And then they don't know what it is and and you're lost out. But Thomas didn't do that. Listen to what he says. He says, as Thomas said, Lord, we know not whether thy goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. The purpose is that Jesus Christ himself is going to come one day and receive the church unto himself. He is gone. He has went and prepared a place in Acts chapter 1 we see as the disciples are standing there that day and two men appear before him there and Jesus is caught up in the clouds of glory and they're standing there staring in the clouds and these angels speak and say you men of Galilee why stand ye here gazing this same Jesus Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Bobby, he's not sending someone else. This same Jesus shall so come in like matter as you have seen him go away. He's coming again. He's prepared that place for us. And oh, what a wonderful place it must be that he is over some 1900 years has been making this place for us. I've got a longing down in my heart. I've got a longing down in my soul to see those things that he's prepared for me. Some people get all tore up when you talk about the coming of the Lord. I get all excited. Some people allow fear. There should not be a spirit of fear in your heart when you talk about the coming of the Lord. There should not be that spirit of fear that overtakes you. But it should be joy, oh hallelujah, and love that I'm going to be able to be with my Lord. He's coming again to receive me unto Himself. The purpose is to receive His saints unto Himself. We also read about... Another purpose in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you'll turn there very quickly with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42, listen. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. Raise a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so as it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Speaking of Christ. Verse 46. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And that's word that which is spiritual. Verse 47. The first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Hold your place right there. I've walked out with you, with your families, to the very last step that we could take with our loved ones on this side of earth. 
on this side of earth, many of them cancer and other things, other weaknesses had taken their life from them. We walked out and we placed them in that ground. But oh, we didn't place them without a hope. We had a blessed hope, oh hallelujah, that we sown them in weakness. But one day, oh hallelujah, they'll be raised in power. We sowed them in corruption. But one day that change, oh hallelujah, is going to take place and they'll be raised in incorruption. Listen, Paul went on. He said, Behold, listen to these words. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Thank God for that change. I don't know about you, but every time my knees hurt and my bones hurt and something hurts, I thank God I can't wait to that change. I can't wait till this old corruptible takes on incorruption. I can't wait till this old mortal takes on immortality. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, he shows us a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. How? Verse 52. In a moment, and the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. What did John say he heard in Revelation 4 and 1? He heard a voice as of a trumpet. Let me tell you, that trumpet's going to sound one day. And these, oh, oh, hallelujah, glory, Peter, God, the dead in Christ are going to rise and we shall be changed. Mm. The trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Child of God, you have no fear of death. Child of God, you have no fear of death. Child of God, you have no fear of death. I'm a winner either way. Oh, if breath leaves this life, don't weep for me. Just say, do a little dance and a little shout and a little praise the Lord because I'll be, oh, hallelujah, on the shores of glory waiting for you someday. I don't have to fear death because he has went before for me. The sting of death, verse 56, is sin. The strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 58, listen to these words. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The purpose of the rapture to bring us unto himself that these bodies might be changed, that we might be resurrected, that our vile bodies might be changed. Now let's look at the matter of the rapture. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Keep your Bibles open right here. We're going to read just a moment. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. The matter of rapture. How will it take place? How will it be? I believe it's going to happen just like he says in the Word of God. Brother Doug, do you believe these things? If you believe these things, you're foolish. Well, I believe the things that I've already seen come to pass that he had spoken beforehand. I see them that they've come to pass. The world doubted. The world couldn't believe. The world couldn't think that these things had happened. But I've seen them come to pass. I see them daily happening on the news. The world stood back and said these things will never be. But they are happening. They are coming to pass. I stood back myself and said how could man come so wicked? But now they are so so wicked that they use not even no common sense whatsoever. They stand and they talk such foolishness and such craziness that male and female are the same and female and male is the same. My God, help us. How can these things be? The Word of God told us that these things would come to pass just as it also told us that one day Christ is coming after His church. Mm, my, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant. Can I say this and not, not, not be mean? I don't say it mean-spirited. 
But ignorant people get on my nerves. <laughs> Forgive me, but they get on my nerves. They'll call and they'll say, are you open? No, we're just here. I mean, we're just, <laughs> we're just here answering the phone, waiting on people, but we're not open. We're that ignorant in church a lot of times. God shows us things and tells us things and directs us in things and we will not listen and we will not hear. There are people that have sat on pews all of their lives and they're not prepared for the rapture. God help us. God stole us this morning. They're sitting without hope when hope is within reach. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. He's saying those that are asleep in the Lord, you don't have to worry. You're, 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 you're sorrowing as though you don't have hope, but you'll see them again. You have a blessed hope. Listen to what he says in verse 14. This is the key. If you catch nothing else this morning but this verse, catch this. For if we work hard, for if we straighten our life out, for if we get on the right road and make ourselves get off the wrong road, for if we get more willpower, for if we try to get righteous, it's not in there, is it? But Brother Doug, this is too simple. This is too simple. This is the gospel. For if we believe, if we really believe, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. You see, I know that I know that I know that I know that Jesus died on the cross for me. I don't look unto man, Brother David, for my salvation. Man will fail, man will falter, but Christ will never fail. I look unto the cross of Calvary and that shed blood and I believe in the finished work that He has saved me from my sins, cleansed me, written my name down in the Lamb's book of life and I know and believe that I am a child of Almighty God. Am I perfected? Am I perfect in myself? No, but I stand in His perfection. Oh, the devil didn't like that. I stand in His perfection. But Larry, I stand in His righteousness. I am justified, oh hallelujah, by the blood of Jesus Christ. When God looks at me, He says, there's my son. Or He looks at one and He says, there's my daughter. Oh hallelujah, because of the blood and because they have believed. So if we believe, that Christ died and He rose again. If we believe that He has saved us, what is so hard to believe that Jesus is going to call us unto Himself? Listen. For this we say unto you, verse 15, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Listen, how's it going to happen? What's the matter of the rapture? Listen. For the Lord Himself. Whew. I'm looking for that day, aren't you? Amen. Brother Brandon, I can remember when I was a child, they used to preach the coming of the Lord so, so, so near, I'd go out and stand and look at the skies and just look for His coming. Have we done that lately? I have. Have you done that lately? Have you just walked out on a wonderful day and looked up and think, oh my, how wonderful it would be to see Jesus Christ Himself come out on the clouds of glory. I believe it so strong. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
You believe that, you better know. I believe every saint of God I've been to that graveyard with when Jesus Christ steps on the clouds, oh hallelujah, and that Holy Ghost Spirit reaches down in that grave and they are raised in incorruption and they are raised in immortality and they come forth from the grave victorious over death. Oh hallelujah, I'm waiting for that moment and for that day. But if the time is when I'm shit alive, then we which are alive and remain. I'm glad he didn't leave us out, ain't you? We which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Anybody tells you rapture's not in there, say, well, look at here, let me show you what rapture means. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Look on down in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I've got to hurry this morning. You see, seeing that we know these things as children of God, as His church, we ought not be asleep. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to lull us to sleep. He wants to get us so attached to this world that we're not looking for the uptaking. Oh, I'm thankful for my life down here. I'm thankful for how God's blessed me. He has, I mean, Brother RJ, He has poured, He's opened the windows of heaven and He has poured physical, spiritual, all, all kinds of blessings upon me and I'm thankful for here but I'm looking oh hallelujah I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God I'm looking for a city where man's hands have not touched I'm looking for a city where sin nor death nor pain nor any of those formal things will be there I'm looking oh hallelujah for the uptaking. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6. Wherefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Next coming weeks, if the Lord stead directs and leads us. We're going to be talking on into the book of Revelation and to the marriage supper of the Lamb and then to the things that happen hereafter. Chapter 4 and verse 1, he said, After this, after the church, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. The first verse which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show these things which must be hereafter. Church, I've got a longing to go. I've got a deep desire down in my heart to see Jesus. I see all these things. You see, there are no signs. Hear me now. You're going to mark me off as a heretic this morning, but hear what I've got to say. There are no signs in the Word of God pointing to the rapture. Listen. The signs point to to the second coming. Those things that takes place in Revelation 19 and in Matthew 24 and 25. But when I see these things already setting up, already setting up, I see these things already every day. Every day I hear, I heard something this morning that just sparked my ear and I I listened and I heard and I've seen these things coming together. How much nearer? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost of God. How much nearer is that day? Church, this is my hope. 
that this is my desire. This is what drives me on. Paul said it like this, and I'm going to close. And I want these words to stick with you this morning. And I believe this is from the Holy Ghost this morning. If I had hope only in this life. Hope only in this world. Well, I enjoy serving Christ. I don't know of any other life I'd rather have. But if it was hope only here, I'd be of all men most miserable. If I had hope only here, I'd be of all men most miserable. Father, Lord, I thank you this morning. I praise you this morning that I know these things that I spoke about will come to pass. Could be in the morning, could be in the evening. But they will happen. But Lord, let us be sober. In these last days. I pray Lord if there's one here this morning. One later through the different ministries of the church. Who has hope only in this life. Let them realize how miserable. That hope is. But I'm so thankful. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Because of simple faith in the cross of Calvary. And that I have accepted the forgiveness of my sins that you paid for. By simply believing, I have that blessed hope. It's what sustains me. When I get up in the morning, it's what keeps me going knowing that that evening I could step on the streets of glory. Woo! <laughs> my, my, my. I thank you this morning that we believe and know the church shall be raptured, shall be a part of that first resurrection. Heads bowed, eyes closed for just a moment while the old ghost is moving. If you don't have that blessed hope this morning, young person, older person, if you're calling and an election is not sure, you can know. I don't care what people's told you, it's not a hope so. You can know this morning.